Welcome, everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. Um, as Jocelyn mentioned, I'm Joana Carrasqueira, and I'm a program manager for TensorFlow at Google. I'm joined by my colleague, Nicole Pang. Yes, I'm Nicole. I'm a product manager for TensorFlow at Google. And we're going to talk about the TensorFlow community and the many exciting ways by which you can get involved in the work that we do. So let me start by saying thank you. Thank you to you, thank you to the community for all the hard work that you've done. Since we've open sourced TensorFlow in 2015, we've received so many contributions and so much support from the community that the, really the project where it is today is due to you, to all your efforts and all your hard work. So thank you for that. Uh, just on core TensorFlow alone, we've received more than 6,000 commits from over 2,000 contributors. This is so impressive, but not just only this. On Stack Overflow, we have received more than 50,000 questions, and we have onboarded more than 120 machine learning experts through our Google Developer Expert Program. Um, and we have established 50 user groups all around the world. We've also had 15, 25 guest posts on our TensorFlow blog, which is fantastic. And our community only continues to grow. Here's a snapshot where you can see that the number of commits from four years ago has been rapidly growing, and there's so much support and excitement from the community. We truly couldn't have gotten this far if it wasn't for you, for the contributors, for all the work that you do. So thank you so much for that. And it's not just the contributions you see and the feedback we get from our community on GitHub um, and Stack Overflow, but of course, um, as you all know, TensorFlow um, is a global, has a global worldwide community. And we see a lot of love for TensorFlow also on other avenues. Uh, you probably have heard a lot about TF2.0 uh, today, yesterday, and you certainly will hear more about it tomorrow. But TF2.0 is, is one instance where our global community responds really positively, and we see so many cases of that. And today we'll touch on um, these cases and of, of course how you can get involved in our community. So briefly what we'll talk about today, we want to tell you how you can learn uh, TensorFlow, how you can get started in your own journey of using TensorFlow, whether you're uh, more in the beginning stages or you're a really advanced user of TensorFlow in your applications. Uh, then we want to showcase to you our global community, um, really run through some really amazing use cases, um, really, really tell you what we've seen uh, people do TensorFlow or people use TensorFlow for, and hopefully that can be um, you know, very inspirational for all of us right in the community. And of course, what you're here today, you want to know how to get involved with TensorFlow. So we'll walk you through not just the ways that you might um, first think of, which might be contributing code because TensorFlow is open source but also a lot of community groups, a lot of uh, special interest groups, and um, those, again, are all over the world, so both for everyone here in this room and, of course, everyone watching online. Um, there's many, many resources, and we're so excited to, to share with you. So we truly, as you could see, we truly have a vibrant global community that continues to grow because there's so much that you can do, so much that we can all contribute to TensorFlow. And uh, let's have a look at where our community is based and what are, what are they doing right now. So the TensorFlow user groups, it's, they are a wonderful way in getting involved with TensorFlow. Either online or face-to-face, -face, you can meet with other like-minded contributors and developers in really to answer questions, to solve problems, challenges, and be building those use cases on really how you can implement TensorFlow across different industries. So just an example, one, uh, one of our user groups in Korea, um, that one is the biggest that we have in the world, and we have engaged more than 46,000 members. It is very impressive. And then China alone, uh, it's the country with most user groups, and they have user groups across 15 different cities. It's really impressive how the community is growing so fast um, all over the world. And one of the key messages that Nicole and I would like you to retain from our presentation today is that if you don't have a user group um, where you're based or in your region, 
Feel free to, share, to start one, share your experiences, connect with other like-minded developers, and start talking about TensorFlow. We are here to support you throughout this process and this journey. So feel free to reach out to us. We're very happy to, to guide you through the process. And um, like I mentioned, if you'd like to start your user group, here are some of the resources that you, that you can have a look online if you are interested in starting your own group. We also um, are sharing our alias, so you can really get to know the team and how you can start um, creating your user group. Yeah, so um, in the spirit of honoring our global community, uh, we want to briefly touch on uh, what the TensorFlow team has been doing worldwide. So like Joanna just said, right, we have so many user groups, and you really can see um, that they are global. And as you heard this morning in the keynote, uh, the TensorFlow team was really excited and really lucky to be able to um, go to uh, many cities uh, and meet many of these users and meet many of the companies and meet many of the startups that are using TensorFlow um, in so many different uh, cities in the world. And of course, um, we're so excited that you're here today. Um, one of our stops on the TensorFlow Roadshow in Santa Clara um, today. And we're really, really excited to, again, be able to see um, the use cases. And we'd love to uh, share briefly um, some of the use cases with you. So first off, when we look at Asia and Asia Pacific, um, there's a really big, vibrant um, community there. And as Joanna just said, right, a, a lot of people in Korea, a lot of people in India, a lot of people in China, they're all using TensorFlow with um, two amazing applications. So in China, for instance, um, TensorFlow is actually not just active on our applications, but also the community is really active on our official TensorFlow WeChat channel. And this WeChat channel showcases a lot of use cases of TF Lite on mobile. Like you can see this one example of a, a video platform called ITE um, with image segmentation on mobile devices. So again, they're doing really awesome work. Um, and not just doing the awesome work, but also sharing right, with all of the community on, on the um, WeChat blog. And we're really, really glad that we're partnering with them and really glad to see these use cases come up. Yes, and Nicole and I were really fortunate that we were able to join the roadshows and really connect with the local communities worldwide. So, for example, at the roadshow in Latin America, we connected with Alerce, which is a startup in Chile, and they are trying to detect supernovas and galaxies through the uses of agile processes and machine learning. And this was really cool. And they use conventional uh, neural networks to classify astronomical objects contained in a stream of um, about 200,000 images per day. The work that they're doing is so impressive and it's absolutely worth sharing with the rest of the community. Another example, um, in Europe, we connected with IM, which is a library of photos that uses TensorFlow for object classification. And um, their algorithm scores photos based on their static quality, but also on the, on the relevance to your brand's visual identity. And then um, every photo is automatically tagged with keywords just to make sure that the entire library is searchable. It's really impressive. And then they use uh, TensorFlow Lite on mobile to make it easier and also more accessible for the users um, to, to use um, IM. And then lastly, um, in Africa, we'd me we met with many exciting startups uh, trying to find uh, solutions for problems at a global scale that were relevant to, to the region. But we would like to highlight the, the great work of Tabua Health, uh, who leverages the power of machine learning and spectral analysis to really turn any smartphone into a powerful, non-invasive uh, screening tool for pneumonia, uh, asthma, and other pulmonary diseases. So they use a uh, convol convolution neural network for modeling spectrograms that were generated from audio analysis through their smartphones. And then the save models, um, they are frozen and converted into TensorFlow Lite. And the converted model is then deployed to a mobile device to perform uh, interference. So these were some of the cases that we connected with during the roadshows. And it was brilliant to see all these very innovative ways that the community is using and building um, around TensorFlow. 
So these were just a few pictures uh, of our roadshows where we truly engaged with the community and it's palpable, it's very tangible, the excitement that we see uh, not only from contributors but also from users of, of TensorFlow. It's fantastic to see how many of these startups and other companies are truly impacting and changing the world and this is all you using TensorFlow. So thank you for that. Yeah, so um, like, I, like we said in the beginning, um, you know, we wanted to do a brief overview of some, just, just a very small sample of some of the awesome use cases of TensorFlow, um, but then really dig into what is available for you, right? So one of the first uh, pillars that we'll talk about is education. Now, why is education um, important for us at TensorFlow and also we hope it's important for you in the community? Well, TensorFlow is, of course, as you, as you are very, uh, very, very heartily knowing, uh, it's open source. But also no, another aspect of that open source nature is that we want to make sure learning resources are available to everyone in the world. And we really value um, not making just the product um, better for learners. So for instance, TF2.0, um, it's uh, easy debugging and um, the usability of Keras is designed for that, um, for that better experience for learners. So not just the product, but also the educational resources. So I'd love to go into uh, some of them in a bit more detail. This morning, you heard about our launch of the new Learn ML Hub on tensorflow.org. Um, this is a, a great tool because we um, heard people's um, feedback that um, they would like more curated resources on tensorflow.org. They would like more paths of learning um, from you know, whatever level of machine learning and deep learning knowledge you have into more advanced applications of TensorFlow. So we heard you and we now responded with this new resource um, of Learn ML. So it's not just a compilation of curated uh, resources, but it's also guided paths. You know, whether you're a beginner on TensorFlow, uh, whether you're more advanced, and which, which resources and what tutorials, what guides um, might be helpful. And also, if you're interested in TFJS, right, um, TensorFlow on the browser, um, we have a, a very detailed, very, very nicely organized um, learning resource there. And we hope that you'll progress through it in whatever stage you are. Um, if you're more advanced with TensorFlow, you might still be interested in our, in our MOOCs, our uh, massive online, uh, multi-part multi -part online courses. As you probably already know, TensorFlow has great relationship, great partnerships with both Deep Learning AI, Coursera, and also Udacity. And these courses are available, again, to everyone, right? So to everyone in this room, to everyone watching online. And we really hope that you'll take um, the stuff that we have in these courses, which is um, both from TensorFlow instructors and also renowned academic instructors too. And we, we really want to give you know, everyone uh, ample opportunity to, to learn TensorFlow. And as you heard this morning, there is a, a new specialization on Coursera for TensorFlow data and deployment and really taking modeling, not just understanding how to build a model, but also deploying it in applications. And again, right, as you move up these steps of knowing TensorFlow, we really hope you'll check out our new and updated tutorials and guides. Um, this is due to the, uh, this is thanks to the amazing work on our TensorFlow uh, developer relations team. Um, they're constantly writing um, new documentation, new guides, new tutorials. And with the launch of TF2.0, um, all of these new guides are available for, for you to check out TF2.0 and really understand how to use Keras and really understand all the use cases. Um, there's some really amazing detailed documentation here, so uh, we really hope you'll take advantage of these resources that we, we provide. And finally, let's jump into how to get involved with contributing. So now you know TensorFlow, right? You're advanced in TensorFlow, you've deployed it to applications, you want to be contributing to the open source uh, community. Well, one of the first ways um, that everyone kind of thinks about is contributing code. And we're happy to describe to you a way that we, we use at Tensor, uh, on the TensorFlow team to consult widely with both design docs, API designs, and also um, some of them are driven by, by community members is the request for comments or RFCs. So this is actually the main, we main way we communicate um, changes to our APIs and re receive design feedback. So we'd love to invite everyone here to um, take a look and also uh, join. This is one example of an RFC. Um, this is an approved RFC TensorFlow, Tensor Forest estimator. 
And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to, of course, thank everyone who has authored or reviewed an RFC. And we actually have 45 RFCs accepted to date, which is really an incredible, uh, incredible number. Um, and they have ranged from TFX to TF Lite, TFJS. And each RFC expands the usage of TensorFlow, right? It really helps um, the community, and it, it also is, is a great boon to, to the TensorFlow team. So um, we'd love to have you also propose designs. You can check out more um, about RFCs, and of course, uh, talk to any of us uh, about this also. Sure. And, and also for bigger projects in which we have to work as a team, we've created the special interest groups, the SIGs, uh, which is a program that organizes the contributors into more focused streams of work. Um, it, everything started with the SIG build, and nowadays we have 11 SIGs, which is really impressive how the SIGs have also and grown so much over the past few years. So all the contributors, you, are very welcome to join the SIG um, and really join the SIG that resonates more with the parts that you either enjoy or care the most uh, about TensorFlow. Um, just an overview of our contributor ecosystem, as you can see highlighted in the, in the darker orange, uh, we have the SIG add-ons, the SIG build, IO, networking, GVM, and micro, and Rust, which are um, community-led open source SIGs, and the others, uh, which include Keras, Swift, MLAR, and um, TensorBoard, they are Google-led with an open design philosophy. So if you see a SIG that resonates with the work that you do, or if you, if you care about the topic and would love to, to learn more, the SIGs have um, monthly or weekly calls, and you're very welcome to join as well. I would like to give you um, an overview uh, of our open source community-led SIGs, and just briefly going through uh, some of the key aspects of the SIGs. The SIG add-ons, uh, it maintains important additions to TensorFlow, um, and adopted some of the parts of TF Contrib. Um, this SIG is led by Sean Morgan and Su Wei Sang. The SIG build, uh, we have one of the, the leads actually here with us today, uh, actually focus on building and package TensorFlow for different distribution environments and is led by Jason Zaman and Austin Anderson. The SIG IO, it focuses on supporting extra file systems and file formats for TensorFlow and is an initiative led by Yong Tang and Anton Dimitriev. Um, and as we all know, high performance computing resources, uh, they require lightning fast interconnectivity and the SIG networking focuses exactly on that, on building more network support for TensorFlow. Uh, this is an initiative led by uh, Beren Wee and Jerem Bedorf. And finally, the SIG Keras. Uh, we've, uh, we've had a DSIG, the SIG Keras, to continue to improve uh, the Keras API for, for TensorFlow. So those are some of the SIGs that you can join, but we also have, like I mentioned before, uh, the other SIGs that are also Google-led, but with an, open, uh, with an open philosophy. You're very welcome to have a look at the SIG playbook at the tensorflow.org, uh, where you'll find my, more information on how you can join the SIGs and, and the ongoing projects that, that they have right now. If you see that uh, none of the SIGs that currently exist are a fit for you or for your work. If we see there's enough evidence and enough support from the community, you can also start and establish your own SIG. Um, and if you head to GitHub on uh, our community resources, that's where you'll see how the SIGs operate, what are the resources and tools that are available for you to help you throughout this process. Um, but also, we have more information not only about the SIGs, but also our RFC process and our code of conduct. So I strongly encourage you to uh, have a look after, after TensorFlow World. And today, I'm also extremely excited to announce that we've achieved another milestone with TensorFlow and our community. 
we have hosted the first Contributor Summit just on Monday and Tuesday for almost 100 participants. And it was a great way to really connect with the SIG leads and with the, with the broader community and to really understand how together we can move forward with the open source project, uh, what are the, 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 the strategy, the, the strategic developments that we can uh, implement in TensorFlow, what are the documentation needs, uh, project management, community management. It was a great conversation that we had over two days. So um, I strongly encourage you to, if you didn't have the chance to participate this time, to have a look at the online resources that will be available afterwards. Um, it was a, a great opportunity to connect with you all. Um, awesome. So um, some of the six, uh, like Joanna mentioned, are um, led by uh, what we call machine learning Google developer experts. And so I'd love to show you a little bit about what that means. So uh, our ML GDEs are a global network of ML experts uh, that Google works closely with and we provide latest information to them, they give us feedback, it's like an awesome relationship. So we're really excited, we have uh, 126 ML GDEs to date worldwide. And this year alone, um, these MLGDs have given over 400 talks worldwide, um, hosted over 250 workshops worldwide, and also written uh, over 200 articles. And this is incredible because um, we actually know that these talks, workshops, and articles have reached a worldwide audience of 435,000 uh, 435, developers. So as you can imagine, TensorFlow, our team, we want to reach as many people as we can, but with the MLGDEs, we really just amplify that reach of um, impact that we can have in the world of uh, teaching it at TensorFlow and really, really helping um, people around the world understand about TensorFlow. So we're really excited. Uh, we would love to um, tell you uh, if you um, want to become a GDE, this is also a link to become a GDE. Um, we also have a lot of links for um, connecting with other GDEs. And today, we would also love to welcome uh, one of our GDEs up to the stage to give a brief, um, brief chat with us. So please welcome Jason Zaman. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm one of the community leads for SIGBUILD. Um, we have a few members of Build around here. Thank you. Um, and to Build's being the, the, the first SIG, it was uh, formed two years ago? Quite a while. So um, I've really seen the community grow a lot in that time. It's really nice to see, like, now we have so many SIGs doing all kinds of things. Um, and it really started, like, I started Build because I saw problems when I was trying to use it and I wanted to make it better. And like, really, the group has grown and done a lot of great things. Um, I want to encourage everyone to get involved. You can join a SIG that already exists. You can find a thing you want to do, work on it, and find more people that are also interested. Maybe start a new SIG. Um, a lot of people around to help. These people are wonderful. Um, and I'm also one of the MLGs, so. It's a great program. It's really nice to hear like from other MLGEs. They work on all kinds of cutting edge stuff, all kinds of different fields, stuff that I don't even know or hear about other than them. So really good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, and another, we're really lucky to have another MLGD in the audience. And please welcome Margaret Maynard Reed. Hello everyone, um, I'm a machine learning GDE. I'm also uh, the lead organizer of Google Developer Group Seattle and uh, another group called the Seattle Data Analytics and Machine Learning. I became a machine learning GDE in uh, 2018 and uh, here's why I, why I love being part of this amazing community. Uh, I get to collaborate with other machine learning GDEs and Googlers on various projects. For example, I get to write some tutorials that you will find on tensorflow.org in some of the blog posts that are, were published on the TensorFlow Medium publication. And earlier this year, I helped organizing the uh, global TensorFlow Dog Spring with Paige, Sergey, and other machine learning GDEs and GDG organizers. 
It was an incredible experience to work on such a high impact project that which was even mentioned in the keynote this morning. So I speak about TensorFlow and on-device machine learning at various conferences, and I really enjoyed the opportunity to be able to preview Google products and provide feedback. So many of the machine learning GDEs are well-known educators, speakers, or O'Reilly book authors. It's really great to be able to learn from my fellow GDEs and Googlers. And once a year, we will gather together uh, for our global GDE summit around the world, the GDEs from around the world. And we just had the summit a few days ago before uh, TensorFlow World. So to become a GDE, yeah, machine learning GDE in particular, you need to be uh, able to demonstrate both your community contribution as well as knowledge in machine learning. We would love to see more of you join our growing machine learning GDE community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Margaret. This is fantastic. I am, I, I'm sure I can speak for both of, of us, but I'm always so impressed by the fantastic and amazing work that our GDEs do. It's really nice to see how engaged the community is. However, there's many other ways by which you can contribute to TensorFlow. It doesn't have to be uh, only through code. So if you, if you are a coder, but you would like to learn or develop a new skill set, there's many other ways that you can get involved with, with TensorFlow. Um, so in, when, we, when it comes down to known code contributions, there are three main pillars that we normally uh, encourage uh, our contributors to join, uh, primarily on user support, which includes creating documentation, translation, training courses that really will help other contributors uh, getting involved and onboarded within the project. Um, in terms of community management, really through uh, organizing events, meetups, and all the initiatives that get the community together and energized and excited about machine learning and TensorFlow. And then on the project management side, creating the tools and resources that will help um, advance our projects, but also keep the health and the sustainability of the initiatives that we do. Um, sometimes we work really on cross-functional teams on really building the use cases on, on how TensorFlow can be um, implemented in different ways. And then finally, I would like to highlight that we have a code of conduct uh, in our TensorFlow community. So um, we apply this code of conduct to all the events and the initiatives that we do. And we would like to remind you that this is a safe space where you can truly be yourself as a contributor. And we welcome that diversity uh, of ideas, opinions, um, and suggestions. So um, if you see that something is just not right, uh, please feel free that you know that you can escalate those problems to also the community stewards. We're here for you. We are here to make sure that you feel engaged, that you feel heard, and that you feel that you belong to a community of excited machine learning experts, contributors, and users. So we um, want to wrap up our conversation by revisiting the links and the, the different uh, resources that we've given you in this talk. So again, um, after TF World, you know, you're wondering how do we keep up with the latest news and the latest uh, deep dives from TensorFlow? Well, these are the ways you can keep up with us. So of course, Twitter um, is very great for a lot of the latest announcements and updates from the TensorFlow team. Our blog is actually an amazing resource of a lot of deep dives, a lot of like understanding sp specific use cases. You might be wondering uh, how to use TensorFlow in a certain application, uh, and the blog may actually have uh, a guest post or a post from the TensorFlow team that can address that. So uh, we really, really suggest you check out the blog. And YouTube, um, I think many of you probably already have seen the TensorFlow YouTube channel, but in case you haven't, it's actually a really awesome resource to learn TensorFlow. So we have a lot of uh, videos that highlight, again, like our new announcements, right? Like how to use TensorFlow, how to use uh, specific um, things like TF Keras. We have videos about that. 
And uh, one of our most popular videos is actually done by um, someone on our developer uh, relations team, Lawrence, and it's the ML Zero to Hero video. Um, and it's uh, a great resource. So again, like if you haven't seen these social resources, we really highly suggest um, you, you follow, and, and that's how you'll get the updates from TensorFlow outside of TF World. And finally, um, these are some of the links that we showed earlier. Uh, we really want to emphasize again, TensorFlow, the community, would not be possible without everyone in the room, you know, without everyone in our, in our community globally. Um, so we really encourage you, if you aren't uh, in a SIG or in a user group, um, if you're interested, you can check out everything on our TensorFlow.org community links. Uh, you can check out the educational resources I mentioned also at the beginning. And um, we are so excited that so many of you are uh, among us in the group today. So we'd really love to you know, welcome you to also share with your fellow uh, conference attendees what it's like being in a SIG, what it's like leading, leading a SIG or being an MLGD too. So with that, with that <laughs> we have our call to action to you, which is join the user groups, join the SIGs, be part of the community, Contribute code to TensorFlow, documentation, translations, educational resources, events. There's so many different and exciting ways to contribute to TensorFlow. So thank you for being with us today. It's been a really, really a pleasure speaking to you about the many ways that you can get involved with the community. And I hope that we can continue these conversations. What do you think, Nicole? Yeah, that sounds perfect. Let us know if you have any questions, of course, and we're so happy that um, you want to be a part of the TensorFlow community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.